Do people, are people, do people want to comment on the specific state of the scene right now? Is we're here where it all started. Um, where specifically do we go from here? What specific things do people want to see that they haven't seen uh, go on in the alternative club scene, which Fraser certainly kick-started into uh, action in 1993? Um, anybody want to come in on that? Talking about what's been going down in our club scene. Come on, audience, you can do it. You can do it. Not a single person wants to talk about the club scene. It's Fraser again. I want to hop back to the thing of the system collapsing. I spent my time out of flight living in the carbon bubble. The ephemera, the ephemera era, the era of ephemerality. And that's what people wanted. 95% of people who wanted to be up in the way of Now it's crashing, finally. And all the ten, and I, I tell you this, in 10 years, every name you know for culture in the last 30 years will be more or less forgotten, irrelevant. And the real cultural movers and shakers are the people here and the old hippie thing. They were really working on history. The others were just living up in the carbon bubble as far as long as we could push it. So that's all crashing. And the majority of people will be looking for what it's really all about, who really knows. And we know. I'll give you one example. Because of the crash, there's going to be hundreds. I know this in Liverpool. I was talking to a friend in Liverpool tonight. There are going to be hundreds of huge empty buildings just fucking sitting there, half renewed, half this, all city. What's going to happen with them? Two, mile, be two, two over. miles out of town, every house on every side of the street is forded up. Two miles. So all that, that property, what's going to happen with it? People are going to move, I mean, squatting is the obvious thing. But there's going to be clubs of all kinds, from dance clubs to debating societies to political, but and the, the government's not going to even try and spread around the first guest. Yeah, yeah. Spread around the whole Britain. It's, it's all over Britain. And people like us are going to be moving into those places in different forms, you know, and influencing them. And this is beginning to be the new culture, which will be the dominant culture as the elephant collapses. I and mean, we have to pray every day that this collapse goes all the way. <laughs> because every color is in the And the one thing that's obvious, to me now, that culture, the dinosaur culture, cannot change by definition. It cannot adapt to the facts. It just cannot do it. There's no point sitting back and holding all in for the city eventually or later. It's not going to do it. So Obama's not going to save us. Obama's an interesting case. He saw it in the middle. Of it. I saw it. What interesting thing about Obama was a few people said no white guy could have done what Obama did. No, I was come out of nowhere and suddenly be president. That couldn't happen with a white, uh, with a white guy. And there's some truth in that. You take Obama and you take a white, you take Barack Obama and a white Obama, <laughs> and you compare them. It's more than the difference in the skin. The difference in the skin is developed, but the culture that each one comes with is radically different. We whiteies have been brought up in a culture without us knowing it, where we naturally assume that we dominate the human race, that we are the latest epitome of the highest in civilization and everything else is just following us, and that we have the right to screw them and take all their stuff. And, you know, that's in the white culture, and all of us have that. You know, some of all worked on it to some extent, but that is a deep part of our culture. Black people, I don't think, have that. They don't have a history of dominating the world or of becoming great empire leaders or any of that stuff. So, good? <laughs> well, okay, we don't have, the main thing is not to get lost in detail or you'll lose the big picture. <laughs> it happens every day, right? <laughs> I mean, we can spend an hour on the cabin, but that's not what you put. I think I've said it. So in other words, what's happening with the rape, with the rape culture? Rape culture, not the rape scene, exactly. That's Rave culture. Many people have moved beyond the dancing so much. You know, it's rave culture and all the attitudes that go with that. We are about to become dominant. We are soon, to, we are beginning to become the dominant culture. 
and the further the dinosaur collapses, the further we will become them. And we are the planet's only hope. I mean, there's no other movement that's going to do it that I can see, you know. So. Yeah, but isn't the rave culture thing of still a white, middle, mostly white, middle class thing? You know, I mean. Yeah. I mean, once you get into all these empty houses and all over the place, they'll all get mixed and there'll be black houses. Somebody asked me uh, the other day, he said, well, please, when Obama gets in, are we going to have a black house? And I thought, and I said, well, not, not in the first year. But, but maybe by the third year, Obama, I'm pretty sure, will start talking about the whole black issue and slavery, compensation for the whole black, all these things have to be faced, you know. And during that campaign, I could very well see him getting the house, the White House painted black, right? For that campaign, for a year. And then somebody said, well, well what do you do after a year? Go back to a White House? And of course, it's a fucking tie-dye house, obviously! <laughs> Friends, I want to ask one more, one more question though about, I mean, what do you see as the specific problems in the, and I'm going to use the word rave scene as opposed to rave culture, in the last few years here that has somewhat slowed things down in a way from moving forward as compared to those first five, six, seven years? Is it, is it your, no, you are not doing the clubs maybe, but um, uh, that's, that actually is probably part of the problem. Um, but up to through warp time, uh, the thing was going very strong, and then the beginning of synergy was was great. But what are the problems as you see it to overcome? I, you know, we, we'll never get a chance to talk about this stuff ever, you know, like this. So. That's a good talking about the problems. I'd rather see that the far distant horizon was aiming for problems. Very specific. Very specific. Well, nothing. Not really in the world talking about good because that makes it more important. I mean, do you want to see clubs like this with more to emphasis on the talk? Where, I mean, what I right now, when we do the miracle on the dance floor at one o'clock, if it works and I get cured, and I'm quite prepared to believe it, then I would like to see eventually every club on the planet having a half hour during the night when they cure something, I apply the love. One of the things about raves is that it releases all this love. It kind of floats in the air and smiles. But it never gets applied. If we could learn to apply it, then you turn clubs into healing centers as well. I mean, I know it's boring. You don't want to put that in the flyer, a healing center. No one's going to come. But that would be the true years. meaning of it. But maybe in three years. Three years from now, yeah. healing center will be a, a groovy one. Maybe, maybe it's maybe never going to be. Maybe people will be desperate. <laughs> You don't lead with, with the boring part, even though it's very real. Financial problems? Yeah, no, that's part of it. There's a, one, one thing I'll say is, um, and I'm probably as guilty, I'm, I know I'm, I was as guilty as anybody else. <clears throat> one of the main problems, but an older promotion, but some wisdom, some experience of Obama against McCain, is the, ar is, the ar <laughs> is the arrogance of youth, you know. So often I see young guys coming through 21, 23, and they think they fucking know it. And not only do they know it, they know all your mistakes and where you went wrong, and it's all going to be different from now on. You know, I've seen that personally, and I've seen it in other things. And that's a danger. That is a danger, you know. Because it, it, it's bad for the older people. They get kicked aside like, you know, oh, you were actually corrupt. You had one foot in the old world. All this stuff, you know. That's not helpful. So I think when we see some young, arrogant guy coming through, it's not he's a bad guy. I was very arrogant when I was a hippie. I used to, and I used to hitchhike around Europe and Africa. I'd get lifts from middle class businessmen driving home, you know. And they would give me a lift, 50 miles. And I'd talk about, you know, life and freedom, and why don't you just leave your wife and join us on the road, and all these stuff, you know. And I'd get out of the car feeling, I actually felt I had done him a favor by sitting in his car for half an hour, right? He's given me a lift, and I'm feeling superior to him, you know? So I'm, I was guilty of it as a young Arab guy, so it's not that they're bad, but just let's put them a little in their place, because, you know, it's just a theory. When, when, when you're young, it's a theory, you know, it's all so clear. 
ain't that clear when you're actually out there in the world, you know. I'll just say my, my feeling is that the personal, which Fraser's clubs, which I worked with him on, has been lost in even in synergy uh, and women up voice. The sense that each person walking through the door has a whole life going on and we have to relate to each person. That's what we're trying to do here tonight. Each person in this room matters, yeah? We, we're celebrating Fraser, we're trying to help him heal. He has liver cancer for anybody who doesn't know. Um, we're doing a healing ceremony at one o'clock in the main dance hall. Um, Mark. I'm sorry, I'm sacked in the Troy Right, so he's sacked, right? We kick him off the fucking stage for a start. There's no trying. There's a fucking being. All we have, all we have is love. One thing they can't chip, one thing they can't control, one thing they can't control. It's love. That is what we have. That is what Raven Movement, 60s, everything is about. The source point is love. That is what we need to have. All we have is unconditional love. It's the way forward, the way through, and it'll open the door. Honestly, all of us have got to understand that we're one being. One being. We are one being reflecting itself. Get rid of the ego. Start loving everyone. Uh, yeah, listen, I, I know I spoke before, but I want to say one thing. I mean, the one thing that is really important about our movement is that we all feel that it is a movement and that there's a spiritual meaning behind it and that we're unifying with all sorts of spiritual values. Some of us are Buddhists, some of us are healers, some of us are just into um, alternative um, process culture, but we feel that across the whole board, everyone's come here with some sort of spiritual um, convictions about the need to build up an alternative life. And Fraser just helped us come together again, you know, and even in, in a tragic situation, he's helped us come together, you know, to sort of dance on the ruins of multinational corporations. Oh! Yeah! <laughs> Someone want to follow that? Someone want to follow that up? Well, I, you know, yeah, right. I just want to uh, maybe say, you know, what Fraser's done, the way that he's sent out into the world and through London and all the amazing events we, we, that we've experienced, it's still going on and there is, a, there, there is a, a, an event that reflects that, the Luminopolis event, which um, we'd love to have more people from this community from the continuum involved because it's taking it's keeping the window open for the next generation to experience the magic we've all had been lucky enough to have experienced in our lives so i really encourage you to get involved in the luminopolis project yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah if you get a ticket tonight you can have all the 10 quid as opposed to 20 quid oh. next next uh, oh, hey. next weekend thanks one man um my name's Daniel, I've been uh, doing, helping organise Synergy and been uh, relatively central to it since it began. So I see a lot of faces here, um, some of which I saw at the beginning of Synergy, which as most people know has followed on from the, the ideas and dreams of, um, of Megatripolis. And I'm just interested to know that each and every one of you, every single one of you, might have something to say about why uh, you may or may not be involved in something like Synergy or Luminopolis. Cause I really don't see many of these faces here that I, I recognise. Um, and if all the spirit is here, and this is where it began, what in each person's mind here has prevented them from continuing? Because that might help us bridge this gap, you know? Tell them about your sound Fraser, um, we, we want to thank you for coming. Uh, and you want to thank us for coming. And uh, um, do you... Uh, do you want to say something to the audience, to put it simple? Of course you do, of course you do. No, no. This is silence. This is silence. This is someone saying they don't want to speak. Oh. Yeah, and thank you. 
Thank you for being there. And thanks for creating, uh, you know, just to say, I didn't speak about how you changed my life. Three, way, three main things strike me, which is Gurdjieff, you got me into Gurdjieff. Um, you brought me back into the counterculture, which I basically left, you know, or left, but, uh, and also, and this, this is something some of the people know about Fred, his, his amazing love of dogs, which is phenomenal. Uh, my dogs didn't like very many human beings, but yet with Fraser and his mum, they were transformed. They, they became loving, beautiful dogs. And Fraser's dog, Jonty, is, uh, is one of the greatest dogs on the planet. He, yeah. He's phenomenal dogs, you know. Yeah, now you've got something to say. I knew you were mentioning Jonty. Jonty for president! Yes, I can. Move forward a little My dog, Jonty, uh, tomorrow, no, Saturday, is being an official stunt for this uh, boxer bitch. <laughs> boxer bitch? Boxer bitch is a young boxer bitch in heat. And the older one is in crossroads. <laughs> so we're going to go over there on Saturday afternoon. Camera up. We're going to go with John and Super Dog, get away. And I'm going to put it on YouTube for you good people. Megatropolis. 
as was written in the Encyclopedia Psychedelica. Evolution, revolutionary cry, Eureka, we've got it, says each superconscious seeker, translating into action the word in each tumultuous tome. You didn't my party, no! Bring it on home. Welcome one and all to the pleasure drum underneath the arches. Take it to the bridge, calling up the fairies, pandemoniums, pilgrimage, experience, warp, factor, fine in heaven's hermitage, in wonder, wide-eyed, servants of the scene, as the communion of souls did convene, 24-hour playtime, dedication to the dream of paradise rising from lunar dawn's dark mist, by the soft lips of hope is each raver kissed, cause I am a showman a kiss! Devils of worry, meet doubts, destroyer, free heart and mind to be a life enjoyer, dispel the fears, suffer from pronoia. They're all out to help me, is what this son of Scottia say. Embrace technology to find the way. It's zippy dee doo da, zippy dee day. He found a way, this megatropolitan man, to show others the direction to make the last stand. All part of the mystery of the divine plan to draw us undivided, dig us out of our hole, gathering the tribe, holy grail the goal, because together we can build ourselves a soul. As we salute our brother for helping to ignite the spark, to take the trippers on angelic arc. Thanks, praise, love, to the one and only, Fraser Clark. Thank you very much. Fraser, I'm going to say this and dedicate it to you. I, didn't, I haven't been speaking this stuff for a long time, but I'm back speaking again. And, and I never met you before, but people had asked me if I'd met you before, so this is a bit like our meeting with all the people at home. And this is from the fairy realms and the nature realms, speaking to the modern human realms, because the modern humans have been calling out for the fairies to speak to them because there's been a bit of loss in this call apparently, according to some rumors around the human realms. About the state of the earth and the future, and whether it's all right, and whether we should be really worried about the state of the planet and the state of the kids, and life's getting worse, and where's all the fun gone, and all these rumors that are knocking around, and things are getting worse, not better. So, this is kind of speaking towards that bit of a question for the humans from the very ground. Try standing up. A ring a ring a ding dong ding dong dell, here's a tale for a fairy to tell. The Return of the Fairies by Kelvin Patrick's Oberon. <laughs> a ring a ring a ding dong ding dong dell, here's a tale for a fairy to tell. From those who remember to those who do not, here's a little poem for those who forgot. Of a race of fearless people, noble, strong and bold, who lived as one with nature and never would grow old. Sculptors of the landscape and servants of the lore Made into we folk by Christians, we were mighty gods before Gods of myth and magic, of heroic deed and fame A hero's fate may well be tragic, yet death is but a game And a place before time existed Before man's minds were even born we built up mighty monuments amidst the hazel, oak and thorn. We plotted all the seasons by the sun, the stars and moon. And we built the very first temples, for we knew you would need them soon. For the day would come when we would pass on and give of our world to you. For it's there in the plan, make time in space for the man to learn and to trust in the truth. So we left you and waited as your dreams accelerated and we watched you and laughed as your progress you graphed. And then we listened in anguish at your foul use of language. 
But now we come to celebrate you as you learn to vibrate. Now we come to remind you of the beauty inside you. Now we come to invite you, we come to excite you, to help you remember Tir Nanog, the land of ever living, ever young. For now your time is fading and we have had enough of your trading. For no longer is there room for your hungers to consume. For no longer are there moments for you to continue nature's torments. For now we shining beings of love come descending from above, from within, without and forever. We are come to gather together, forever together, 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 forever together, 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 forever we have come to recreate our world anew, to make all of our dreams come true. Children of light and Lucifer's babies, Templar knights and beautiful ladies, we have come back for our home, long stolen by Rome. We have come back to our womb, which you call our tombs. We have come back with our birthrights, our blessings and songs. We've come back to remind you, you've been sleeping too long. Release all your powers, release all your fears, release all your anger. And make way for your tears. There is no need now for worry or separation or grief. The apocalypse is well and truly upon us now. It is a sacred release. So make way for the true kings, the druids and queens, for we hold her powers despite how things seem. For we hold her powers, for we are her dream. For we hold her powers, for we are the she. For we hold her powers, for we are the she. For we hold her powers, for we are the she. For we, her powers are the she. She comes from within and spreads without, and none can evade her, and none can avoid her. For she is Creatrix, the mother of all. Creatrix, create tricks. She makes tricks with pad tricks with pad tricks, the matrix in matrix. Stop. 
Is that possible? No, no. Uh, clubs turn them on. I think the club turned them on. Because we are people who know how to dance and celebrate, sometimes maybe we forget to share our scaredness. So thank you, Fraser, for, for coming into the midst of us with your, your suffering and your sense of not knowing where this will take you. And all of us are wanting you to stay with us and all of us know that you may be going to another form. This, this is a time of expressing great love. And I, I think there are people here who are very close to you. And some people began to say things to you, but I'd, I'd like for this to be an, another opportunity because who knows if we'll ever create this extraordinary game around Fraser. This is unique, this is historical, this is this is deep stuff, deep medicine for us all. So I'd like to say if there's anyone here who would like to, to share with Fraser, here's the microphone. Just step forward, take it. This is a power circle. Speak deeply from yourself. Be authentic, be true. Thank you to all the poets who have prepared this moment for us in this room. This is a special room. This is a special time.
love and affection ripples out and touches everyone. And sometimes the reaction seems destructive, but I know it's not. Things happen for a reason. Every challenge opens up the mind. As long as I'm present, you will always find me being kind. There's a crazy world that I won't let suck me in. I'll sit and watch it unfold and help out if I can. There's a beautiful world in which I involve myself fully. And now I see more clearly than in any dream the beauty that exists in everything. So now I'm cured, but I'm still healing. People around me, the oneness, my kin. We come together, we feel the power. Now is the time for our light to shine. Now is the, right now is the time for our light to shine. So right now is the only time. So I decide to shine. That's it, man. Oops. Thanks for bringing this together, man. There's so much I want to say. Um, I love you, my 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 my, my father. Um, you gave me hope at a time when I needed it most, and you gave me. You showed me that life didn't have to be the way I thought it had to be. You opened up the doors for me, um, and changed my life. Thank you. 
I want to be old fashioned. Three cheers for Fraser. Hip hip hooray! Hip hip hooray! Hip hip hooray! Zip zip hooray! Zip zip hooray! Zip zip hooray! Oh, he's a good fellow. Oh, he's a good fellow. Step forward a bit. You're gonna to step forward a bit. You want to quite reach it. Gotta to, got to move to the center.